Hello. So the June solar production period. Um, this period had the longest day of the year, and I'd been looking forward to it, so I thought it was going to be a really good one. So let's look at the bill. The total bill was $203.30 before net metering. Once you include the 814 kilowatt hours I exported to the grid, the bill came to $125.68. Um, I still have a little bit of credit left from SunPro. They gave me a $1,000 credit when I had my solar panels installed. Uh, the bill period was 32 days. Uh, my rate went up one penny to 9.5 cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, the period was June 5th through July 7th. Um, it was a lot higher. We, we keep the dogs in the house, so we don't want to turn the AC up too much to have them in there cooking. Even though we used a lot, the 34 kilowatt hours per day that we use was actually half what we used this time last year when we didn't have the solar panels. So my usage was really high. It was kind of the opposite of January where I was using a pretty much an inefficient system of trying to keep the house warm. This time I was trying to keep the house cool, even having the thermostat set to 78 degrees. It still was running a lot more than it normally would. I averaged 14 hours and six minutes of daylight. Um, that increased 19 minutes over the last period. That's not as big of an increase of the last period was, but since I've reached the longest day of the year, it's gonna to start to decrease. The weather wasn't very favorable. It was hot and cloudy. The average temperature was up to 81 degrees. That's two degrees more than last period. And that includes nights. There were some points where I would look at the thermostat in the truck at three o'clock in the morning and it would be 82, 83 degrees. We only had five sunny days, 14 partly cloudy and 11 cloudy days. So I did the best with what was presented to me. Another interesting thing was because it was so hot during the day, and the air conditioner was running when it normally wouldn't be running, I exported a lot less than I normally would. I only exported 63% of my production. The monthly guaranteed production for my system is 28.5 kilowatt hours per day, and I'm averaging 33.3 .3 per day. My total production was 1,206 kilowatt hours, which gives me a savings of $115. That includes the production that I didn't send to the grid. If you were thinking about getting a system that was exactly like mine and you were paying something more like the national average, which is 12 cents per kilowatt hour, then you would have saved $144.73. So how about the car? How much did it cost me to charge the Tesla? Or how much did I save? Um, I drove 1,654 miles that period. Um, averaging 294 watt hours per mile and that would have cost me $46.37 to charge the car. So local gas prices in, in my area stayed about the same as they were last period at $2.54 a gallon. To drive that same amount of miles in a car that averages 27 miles per gallon would have cost me $155.60. So you can say I saved $109.23 in fuel. Um, if you compare the national average electricity rates to the national average gas prices, I would have saved $117.46. Uh, let's look at a couple of days that stood out. June 6th was my best day. I consumed nine more kilowatt hours than I produced. Um, that was the coolest day of the period. It was the first day of the period. Even though we had fog early in the morning, I was still able to get good production that day. The worst day was July 5th. I consumed 50 more kilowatt hours than I produced. This was actually about the same as my worst day on last period's bill. On this day, I was off all day. It was raining, so I didn't feel like Ubering. So I was using up a good bit of electricity. June 9th was the best production day of the period. I produced 48.2 kilowatt hours. That's probably the most complete looking production arch I've had in the last couple periods. My best consumption day was June 12th. I only consumed 53.2 kilowatt hours, which isn't really that good. And it could have been worse if I didn't have to go to the supercharger from Ubering all day. June 21st was a day I've been looking forward to. This was the longest day of the year but 
it was cloudy, so I didn't get the great production I was hoping for. June 29th is what I would call my most average day. I consumed 34 kilowatt hours more than I produced. Pretty much all of the spikes are for car charging and air conditioning. Looking at the chart for the month, you can see that I didn't produce more than I consumed on any day, but some days were a lot worse than others. Since we've reached the halfway point, let's look at the chart for the entire year. The gap between production and consumption is starting to open up again, but it's not as wide as it was in January when I had the days below freezing, even though the consumption is actually higher than those days.